Good morning, St. Mary's. It is a joy to have you in worship this morning on what really is a very, very special Sunday. And it's special not just because it's unlike other things that we do in church where we celebrate all saints, but it is, it's special in our culture, that we live in a culture where so often we are encouraged to think about life more, bigger, better, faster, richer. We're constantly pushing our lives to go beyond who and what we are in this moment. And the church in this moment has the wisdom to slow, say, slow down a second, slow down a second, let us remember those who have gone before us. That there are things bigger than you and me. There are things, there is a community larger than just those who gather in person and online this morning. This isn't just unique to the church. It is unique and important to our culture. To honor those who have come before us. And also, as we'll do today, to remember those who are coming after us. Both are a wonderful and beautiful thing. And so as we gather, I want to encourage you to do something during the prelude time. Is today, obviously, is going to be a time to look backwards, and then we're also going to receive around the table. And when we do that, we're going to say, discern the body. Paul instructs us before we come to the table, discern the body of Christ. And so what I want you to do is look around. Discern the body who is here, because all saints means y'all too. All saints isn't just for the dead. All saints means all saints. So discern who is around this table this morning. Discern who is, who is here. Discern the remarkable nature of who gathers in this space to worship. And give thanks for the beauty and the diversity of the body of Christ. And in that spirit, we have reason to rejoice. And so I invite you to discern that community, to be aware of the great cloud of witnesses that we gather with today as we ready our hearts for worship. Good morning. 
please join responsively for the call to worship. A thousand days are but a moment to God. All flesh is grass and withers away. Still we treasure our days with those whom we love and, and reluctantly give, give them back, back to God. On this day, we thank God for the saints in our lives. Let us worship God. In the beginning, God called the world into being, saying, let there be light. In the fullness of time, Jesus came from God to us, saying, I am the light of the world. In our everyday life, we see the works of the saints, the ones in whom God's light shines. So let us give thanks for the saints this day, and let us worship God. We gather this morning to remember our call to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. We bring with us the events of the week in the world and in our lives, trying to know how to be just and loving and humble in the midst of it all. We gather here and see those who are doing justice, who are kind beyond measure, who set the example for humility, with gratitude for the living saints, with thankfulness for the purposes of faith. Let us worship God. And if we could please rise and join as you're able to our first hymn, Blessed are the poor in spirit, and it's in the chalice hymnal number 16. Thank you. Please be seated. Let's join responsively in the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. God of the generations, when we set our hands to labor, thinking we work alone, remind us that we carry on our lips the words of the prophets in the veins and the blood of the martyrs in our eyes, the mystic's vision, in our hands, the strength of thousands. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged vines, 
of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine stained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Please join responsively for Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in this holy place? Those who have clinging hands and pure hearts do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Our New Testament reading comes today from Revelations chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, see, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God, and they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, see, I am making all things new. Also he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I see the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Our final reading for this morning comes from the Gospel according to St. John, from the 11th chapter, specifically verses 32 through, through uh, 44. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, 
so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to him, unbind him and let him go. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thank you so much. Please be seated. Some of you looking in the bulletin going, reflection, is is that different than sermon? Yeah, and the answer is it's shorter. All right, so that's a win for today. But today, I just, there's so much going on today that I simply want to reflect very briefly and kind of set us up for what it is that we will be doing here in just a couple of minutes. Because we'll light candles and remember those who have passed away in the last year We're going to distribute Bibles to our confirmands and to celebrate their journey as disciples of Christ. And then we're all going to gather around this table and receive communion. There's a lot to do. And so I want that to be the thing that speaks today. But I do want to reflect for a second, again, because today is such a unique day in the life of the church. It deserves to have something said about it. And so I want to direct your attention briefly and quickly to Psalm 24. It's printed in your bulletin. You can see the entirety of it. And it provides a great deal of comfort for those of us who gather on this day who are weighed down with sorrow in our heart, whether it is somebody that we have lost recently, and certainly we as a congregation, we have experienced that. We have had deep loss in and amongst our, this family that we call St. Mary's. Others of us today are all constantly called to mind those who have passed away at, at, at a time before. I certainly am remembering for myself, you know, family members who have passed away, not in the past year, but still that weighs heavy on my heart. And I have little doubt that many of you are mourning loved ones who have passed away many, many years ago, and yet that burden still remains in our souls. It never really fully goes away. And so we look for a word of comfort on this day, right? And it's possible that Psalm 24 intends to encourage us and then doesn't. Because hear what it says, the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. And we say, yes, the world belongs to God. We know that everything is within God's purview. Confirmands, we just talked about God establishing the world on the seas, yes? But then it asks the question, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? And the answer we might predict, yes? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully, they will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Like, rock on, yes, the people who go up the mountain of the Lord are the good people, right? Yeah, they are. Which might be a problem for me, because I don't know that I have clean hands and a pure heart. Might be for you, some of us going like, well, how clean do my hands have to be? Well, how, how pure does my heart have to be? Because the longer we sit here and the longer we think about this question, we're like, uh-oh, might not be ideal. And we've all been to funerals, yes? We go to the funeral and we, and we say something powerful and meaningful about the person's life. I believe every single person, when they come to their funeral, deserves to have somebody stop and think about their life deeply and profoundly. But we've all been at places where we're like, well, there's also some other truths, right? I don't mean to make it awkward. I'm not going to leave it awkward, but let's let it be awkward for a second, that it's not always roses in our lives, right? And perhaps Psalm 24 leaves us in a spot where we're like, well, again, how clean do my hands have to be? How pure does my heart have to be? Well, friends, here's what I want to say on this All Saints, is that if All Saints is just about saying nice and good things about one another, we don't need any of this. All Saints 
has to proclaim the gospel. Just like everything else we do in church, all saints has to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus incarnate, Jesus died, Jesus rose again, and Jesus goes to the right hand of the Father. It has to proclaim that. And through that lens, the answer to this question, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place, the answer is, on our own merits, none of us. Not a one. And that's hard for me to think about for myself. And that might be hard for us to think about our loved ones. I mean, how many of us have a dear, saintly old grandmother? We're like, that was a pure, those were, that was a pure soul, yes. And we think long and hard about it. Graham had moments. Your parents had moments. Your friends had moments. We don't talk about them in this space, but they had moments, right? You see, the answer to this question is there is only one who ascends the hill of the Lord. One might understand this hill of the Lord to be the right hand of God. Who ascends into heaven? Who gets there? And the answer is only one, and it's Christ. Christ, the one with clean hands. Christ, the one with a pure heart. Christ, the one who lived his life fully and completely in the direction of the kingdom of God. And so you say, well, does that leave us out then? Then what is all this? Why do we celebrate this? Well, no, it doesn't leave us out. And this is where the gospel happens. Because Jesus says, I'm taking you with me. Jesus says, I'm going to gather you together. I have called you in all of your virtue and all of your mess ups. In all of your, in all of your beauty and wonder. And in all of the seedy under stuff that none of us really like talking about in church. Jesus says, I have called you. I called you in your baptism. When just like the heavens tore open and God looked down on Jesus and said, you are my beloved child, with you I am well pleased. Everybody who passes through that fount, Jesus looks at him and says, you are my beloved child, with you I am well pleased before you did a single work. It's the beauty of baptizing infants. We loved them before they even knew they were loved. God loved them before they even knew what love was. And he says, I walked with you in your greatest victories and I was there with you in your biggest failures. And I was there at confirmation when, it, when, that, when we say the Holy Spirit in a new and powerful way comes and fills you and claims you as God's own. And I was there with you, again, in all of your successes and in all of your mess ups. And if I'm with you all the way, then why wouldn't I be with you at your death? This is what leaves us with the gospel message. Friends, we don't have the clean hands and pure hearts, though we encourage leaning in that direction for sure. But God loved us. Long before any of that. And he says, I'm taking you with me. This is what the, this is what the, uh, the epistle writers write when they say, you are the body of Christ. Friends, this is very, very literal. Wherever the body of Christ goes is where we go. And if Jesus is the one who rises to heaven, the one who sits at the right hand of God, the one who receives blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation, then so it is true for us as well. Wherever Jesus goes, he's taken us, all of us, with him. And that's when the back end of this psalm really pops. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, and let your minds run to your favorite fantasy and think about these Huge, heavy, ancient doors. And the angels say, open them up, because the king of glory is coming in. Well, they don't have to be open that wide if just one dude's coming. But they got to be thrown wide open if all of us are coming. That the king of glory may come in. Who is this king? The Lord of hosts. The Lord of us all. The one who has taken us all with him. That's what's coming through these gates. And so, friends, as we gather around this table down here and this table up here, we remember our friends and our loved ones, yes, because they matter to us. Nobody's taken that away from any of us. And whatever your feels are today, feel all the feels. But every one of those people is a reminder that God saves us because God loves us. 
not because we're the world's most special person, not because of our pure hands and our pure hearts. Every one of them is a reminder that God is doing a remarkable work in our life and has claimed us as his own. And wherever he is, there we will be. And so, yes, we remember them for their sake, but we also remember them for our sakes. That when we're not sure how clean our hands are, we're not sure how pure our hearts are, let us be reminded that God has not abandoned us. Christ walks with us and God continues his good work in each one of us. May the saints of the past inspire the saints of the present. And let us also remember that the saints of the present got to inspire the saints that are to come. But in all of it, let us make sure that we proclaim the love of God who loves us deeply and unconditionally and without fail. And so to do that, we have in front of us an All Saints Litany. And a litany, to put it very bluntly, is a really long prayer, generally read responsively. It simply names off the things that matter to us on this day. And today, this litany is going to take us through a couple things. We're going to begin by simply praying. We remember the saints who have gone before us. And then we're going to remember some of those saints. We're going to start by remembering those. We reach all the way back into the times of the Bible and name those stories that shaped our ancestors and still shape us today. It'll move into some of the saints that have gone before us, more modern saints, more people maybe we haven't even heard of to have done something courageously to show us the way of faith. And then, as always, and as it always should be, we make it local. And together we'll read the names of those who have been placed on our prayer list. And so what we'll do when we come to that time is we will say each one of the names and we will toll the bell one time. After the completion of the tolling of the bells, I will then invite anyone who would like to come forward. We have candles laid out here for those who would like to light a candle. If some of you brought a candle, you're welcome to bring that candle forward and use it and light it and simply place it on the table. If you're like, gee, there's somebody I'd really like to remember, but I forgot to bring my candle. Well, we've got them and we got a whole bag sitting right there, all right? We light candles until it's not safe anymore, if we have to. We'll spend time simply lighting candles with the image in our minds, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And after that is complete, and I'll be there, I'll have the lighter, and I'll simply hand it one person to another. I'll remask before I come down. And then after that, we'll continue with our litany, and then we'll move on with the rest of the service. So friends, I invite you into a, just a very brief moment of silence to collect ourselves as we, rem- as we ready ourselves to remember the saints who have gone before us. Let us pray. God, we remember those saints who have gone before us and honor their legacy. Those who followed the way of Christ faithfully, those who made mistakes along the way, Those who made progress for peace. Those who live simply and quietly. Those who gained honor and distinction without pride. Those who were martyred for their faith. Gracious God, you are to be praised for the women and men whose faithful witness to your love inspires each generation of your people. Abraham and Sarah. Isaiah of Jerusalem. For Ruth. Esther, Paul of Tarsus, Jesus 
Mary Magdalene. Teresa of Avila, Hildegard of Bingen, and Claire of Assisi. Martin Luther, John Calvin, and Menno Simons. The Reverend Samuel Sewell, Phyllis Wheatley, Lemuel Haynes. Antoinette Brown, William R. Johnson, Joseph H. Evans. And all the saints of this congregation whom we name before you today. Dan Amsler. Dennis Bitzel. Carrie Boone. Norma Boone. Barb Brown, Ed Brown, Robert Bird Brown, Andrew Dutterer, William Gallus Sr., Betty Harmon, Richard Hess. Bonnie Dutterer Inkman, Dwayne Lindsay, Carolyn Myers, Iris Nicolaisen, Teresa Klein Rister, Evelyn Schaefer, Robert Seip, Vivian Seip. Roy Smith, John Vandegrift, Abram Weller, Ken Wentz, Anita Yingling, Kevin Yingling, and all those whom we might name in a moment of silence in the quiet of our hearts. And at this time, we would ask those who desire to light a candle to please join us in the center aisle. We invite you to observe some sort of spacing and distancing in respect to one another. We invite you to come down the center and to light candles. Marianne, if you could give us some music.
I wasn't ready for that. Must be getting older. Let us continue our prayers. They have finished their work on earth, reverberating into our lives now. Let us pray. O oh God, the King of saints, we praise and magnify your holy name for all your servants who have finished their course in your faith and fear. And we beg you that, encouraged by their examples, aided by their prayers, and strengthened by their fellowship, we also may be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ continue to inspire us. As those four mothers and forefathers were inspired by him. And so friends, we invite you to stand as we continue to reflect on this memorial as together we sing in the chalice hymnal number 637, also printed in your bulletin and on the screen for all the saints.
Thank you. Please be seated. And as we said, today is all saints, which means we don't just talk about the saints that were, we talk about the saints that are still yet forming and developing. And it's indeed a joy to be able to present to you at the very beginning of our confirmation journey, our six confirmands, which, and you'll forgive me if I'm doing a little happy dance and we got six confirmands in this class. I'm so fired up about that. But we thought in this context to say that God is still doing something powerful and remarkable in us and that there is places left for us to go. And it is embodied in so many ways by these six young men and women who set out on this journey of faith. Uh, we thought that was most appropriate today. And so I'd like to call forward those confirmands. And we do have something for you and a little bit of a liturgy. We'd like to bless you in the process. And so uh, I'm going to invite forward Caleb Chamberlain, but he's not here today. So there you go. The pastor's kid not here today. Um, Charlotte Chamberlain. We invite forward Ethan, Grant, Eli and Ryan. All right, so here's what we're going to do to make this a little simple. You're all going to come stand here and look at me so you don't have to look at them and get all like, oh my gosh, there's so many people here, okay? <laughs> and so I want you to understand that today what we have for you is a gift. Is it as cool sometimes as an Amazon gift card or an Xbox maybe, or, or slime? Maybe not. Maybe not. But I'm telling you, it's more life-changing than anything we could give you. And what we intend to give you today is simply a Bible. And over the course of this year, we're going to walk through that Bible. And certainly you all have done much of that already. One of the things I've enjoyed about spending time with you already is your thoughts about the Bible and what it means and what it does and how confusing it is and all these things. We're going to slowly and surely kind of walk through it. And maybe, just maybe, We'll discover something we didn't know. We'll discover the love of God for each and every one of you just as you are. And so uh, this is nothing but a gift. And so allow us to pray for you and to bless you. I do have one thing for you all to say back, but I'll tell you exactly what to say. You just repeat after me, okay? We good? Now, to the congregation, please join me as we ready ourselves to bless these young men and women. Woman. Today, these young men and women, children of God, our siblings in Christ and our co-laborers in the Spirit are entrusted with the Bible, a symbol of their spiritual journey. In the Bible, you will also find it written, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Through these stories, you will come to know the limitless love of God in Jesus Christ. You'll discover that you are God's beloved child. You'll learn how to discern the world around you with the eyes of faith. This knowledge will help you live in the light of God, your neighbors, and yourselves. And so, having heard this mystery that is laid out before you and the companionship that we offer you, do you accept these Bibles and commit yourselves to learning about the story of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord? If so, repeat after me. Say, we thank God for your companionship and love. We accept this Bible and we accept the journey of discovery that God has for us. And I can affirm that they all spoke in the affirmative. Continue your prayers. All right, so now what I would like to do, I'd like to have you slide over here and stand on this side of the table, and I'm gonna stand on this side of the table. 
Furthermore, and we didn't talk about this before, but Emily, I'd love for you to come as representative of spiritual formation, and I can think of no one more committed to the growth of our young men and women than you. If you could get the Bibles that are sitting on the front pew there and hand them out to one another. And the other thing that I would like to do, and we didn't talk about this either beforehand, but if you have served as an elder in any United Church of Christ, I would like to invite you to come forward and to make your way behind these young men and women. So you can be in the pews kind of behind, but if you have served as an elder, we want to invite you forward to bless them as well. I didn't think about this. It's like half the congregation. <laughs> Now I'm going to ask you to turn around and take a look. Take a look at all these folks who say, I'll come up and we'll say a blessing for you. If nothing else, you are loved more than you know. And so friends, together, let us pray. Almighty God, it is by your grace that these children of God begin this journey of confirmation. Grant that through the revelation of Scripture, through their energy and witness, and through our shared work, we all might burn brightly with the spirit of love and discipline and may always walk before you as children of the light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, Emily, I invite you to distribute. And I know we usually applaud things at the end of a journey, but I suspect maybe we should applause at the beginning of this journey. And so friends, as we return to our seats, can you give these young men and women a round of applause? And you all may go to your seats. As together we sing, oh, Marianne's coming. I didn't think about that. <laughs> Gonna sing together, Break Thou the Bread of Life. We invite you to stand as you are able.
continue to pray for the saints as we pray for those who are on our prayer list this day. And unfortunately, but with great responsibility, our prayer list for this week is rather long. We've been invited to pray for David Webb, um, the cousin of Kendra Hurd, who has inoperable brain cancer. Um, it's back from remission. And so a season of enthusiasm and then the heavy weight of a diagnosis again. We've been asked to continue to pray for Mel Silwick, who is, in, uh, is going through a new, new course of treatment for endocrine cancer. We've been asked to pray for the family of Carolyn Myers, who passed away suddenly this week in her sleep. And pray also for the family of Ken Wentz, who passed away after a battle with leukemia. We've been asked to pray for Tommy Cook and Marvin Bosley, and their needs are known not to us, but to God. We pray for Maya Niklo, who went through a kidney surgery this past week, and pray for continued recovery. We give thanks and continue to pray for uh, Nancy Householder's sister, Martha Brunzus who went through knee replacement, and it was successful, and Nancy was able to be in Rhode Island with her and has returned home, and we continue to pray for that. And then finally, we were asked to pray for Paul Helm, Ron Gledhill, Jeff Jones, Teresa Gledhill, and Leo Gledhill, all relations to Emily, um, all of whom are battling COVID, um, and Ron is still on a ventilator. Others are doing well, um, but again, a reminder that we still remain uh, under the specter of death in the midst of a pandemic. We also pray for Mike Driscoll, who has surgery coming up this week, and we remember Mike as well. And so, let us pray. Lord, this is a heavy service today, full of memory, full of longing to go back, full of wanting memory again, full of wanting to have experiences again. Lord, we feel the burden of this day. Because we feel the burden of death, we are not yet home. But Lord, we pray that this burden that we feel this day, this longing in our heart, this absence, this thing that's no longer in our lives that we miss so very, very much, we pray, Lord, that it would not debilitate us and act as an anchor on our faith, but rather, Lord, that it would inspire us to be the kind of person in another person's life That when our time comes to die, that others miss us just as much because we made that kind of an impact. And so we pray for all the saints, for those who have come before, for those with whom we walk this journey of life now, and for those who will come after us. Lord, may your spirit blow through it all and bring your kingdom come, that your will might be done. And so, Lord, we name before you the names that we've been given to pray for. And we pray for David Webb, for Mel Silwick, the family of Carolyn Myers, the family of Ken Wentz, for Tommy Cook, Marvin Bosley, Maya Nicklo, Martha Brunzus, Paul Helm, Ron and Teresa Gledhill, Jeff Jones, Leo Gledhill, and Mike Driscoll. Knowing all their needs, O oh God, we hold them before the throne of grace and trust that you will act in accordance with your good purpose and will in their lives. Hear these prayers which we lift up. Hear also the prayers of the silence of our hearts. All these things we ask, O Lord, in the name of the one who came and walked alongside of us, carrying our burdens with him, Jesus Christ our Lord, who went to the cross in death, joining us even there, and rose to life and life everlasting and calls to us to come and follow him. Amen. And together let us pray in the words that our Savior indeed taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And friends, we give thanks for the offerings that have been collected because they empower the work of the saints. And we say thank you for all of you who continue to give towards the ministry of St. Mary's. And so we're going to bring those offerings forward and we invite you to join together as we bless them in singing the doxology.
Let us pray. Living God, we are your people. We carry your presence. Use us and our gifts to accomplish your mission in the world. Multiply our effort to meet every need. This we pray in the name of Christ, whom with you and the Holy Spirit reign in our hearts and lives, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. And my apologies, you would think I would know that the mask over the mic is hard to listen to. I apologize for that. But friends, as we prepare to gather around this table, I'm reminded that there are lots of different religions and belief systems in the world that have some really deep connection to ancestors. And it's one of the things we don't talk about a whole lot, like, is there a place for that? And it can be kind of weird, it can go to some odd places, but when somebody said, well, how do I connect with those whom I love who have gone before me? My answer is always, it's right here. Because this table we have isn't just for us who are within these walls. This table is spread by Jesus Christ. It is an ongoing feast in heaven. It is not so much that Jesus comes down, although certainly that happens, but rather in this meal we are called up to that table. That we are never more present to one another than at this meal. Where are the ones who have gone before us already feast with great gladness and joy at the feet of Christ. And they call to us and say, come to the party, would you? Come join us, please. That is what this table in so many ways is about. And so friends, as we said at the beginning of this service, let us discern the body. Not just those who are here, but certainly we begin here. And let us discern those who are around this table as we are ready to receive this meal. My friends, the Apostle Paul speaks words of peace when he writes, We are sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Here, the love of God is made present to us. As we gather at this table, we join together with the saints of every time and age, praising God with one voice. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and our highest calling to give thanks unto you, Lord our God, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the Word made flesh, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, conceived by the Virgin Mary. To the poor, Christ proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom and to the sorrowful joy. Taking our humanity upon himself, he was crucified for us all, and in your great power he arose and defeated death and hell. Through his cross we have been made a new creation and brought back into the paradise of relationship with God and one another. We thank you for the church throughout the ages who have witnessed to that new creation with compassion and conviction. Oh Lord, we thank you for the truth that has been passed on to us, that it is by giving that we receive, It is by becoming weak that we shall be strong. It is by loving others that we shall be loved. It is by offering ourselves that your kingdom shall unfold. It is by dying that we shall inherit life everlasting. Lord, give us courage to follow your way of life. For your love and faithfulness, we will at all times praise you and join in the unending hymn around your throne as we say together, Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, The whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God, Hosanna in the highest. My friends, we remember that on the night in which our Savior was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke that bread and he gave it to his apostles. And he said to them, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, our Lord Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
And later the church reflecting, saying, for as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And therefore we proclaim the mystery of our faith together. Christ's death, O God, we proclaim. Christ's resurrection we declare. Christ's coming we await. Glory be to you, O God. Eternal God, we unite in this covenant of faith, recalling Christ's suffering and death, rejoicing in Christ's resurrection, and awaiting Christ's return in victory. We spread your table with these gifts of the earth and of our labor. Inspired by your saints, we present to you our very lives, committed to your service on behalf of all people. We ask you to send your spirit on this bread and wine, on our gifts, and upon us. Strengthen your universal church that it may be the champion of peace and justice in the world. Restore the earth with your grace that is able to make all things new. Be present with us as we share this meal and throughout all our lives that we may know you as the Holy One who with Christ and the Holy Spirit lives forever. Amen. My friends, together we confess that this bread which we break together is for us the communion of the body of Christ. And this cup which we pour out and share together is for us the communion of the blood of Christ. And so we pray saying, Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. And so as we come around this table... In our sharing bread today, we include in companionship the saints alive and the saints resurrected. In our sharing of bread today, we include in the companionship the poor, marginalized, and rejected of the world. In our sharing of bread today, we include in the companionship those known to us and those not known who need Jesus now. In our sharing of bread today, we include in companionship Jesus, our incarnated, broken, and risen Lord. And so, my friends, wherever you are, whether it's your home or here amongst us today, we invite you to take the bread. I hear you all tearing the little top off and take the bread out. And let us be reminded as we prepare to eat that it was Christ who invited all to his table. And indeed, we are blessed to be amongst that table. And so, accompanied by family and friends, the community that has gathered around Jesus for generations, let us take and eat. friends, we invite you to take the cup. And again, as we often say, wine is for gladness of the heart. And we remember that we say this is the blood, which is life. Life and gladness is what Jesus sets before us who follow in his way. It is what is present to the saints now and is what is offered to us as we follow after Christ. And so in anticipation, let us receive this cup. Do this in remembrance of me. just played. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. So friends, let us offer up a prayer of thanksgiving as together we pray. We give you thanks for this meal of nourishment and joy. And we thank you for the companions with whom we share it. Give us, as you give to all the faithful, the hope of salvation and the promise of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of many from the dead. Amen. So we conclude with a hymn. The hymn is listed over there, but I got to cover this up. So I invite you to stand and sing whatever shows up on the screen right there as we're ready, as we ready to close out worship today.
And now, my friends, go on your way rejoicing, surrounded as you are by such a great cloud of witnesses. Take courage as you face each new challenge and comfort when you pick yourself up from a fall. In whatever good you choose to do, precede it with hope, accompany it with prayer, and follow it with thanksgiving. The blessing of God Almighty, whom the saints have trusted as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forevermore. Amen. so very much. Please be seated. I promise we'll go through the announcements quick. I know it's been a full Sunday, and thank you so much for coming and for participating in person and online. First of all, uh, we want to honor our tech sponsorship for today. Thank you so very much. It's in honor of Kelly and Patrick Davis's November birthdays from Ray and Ruth Davis. So we say thank you to Ray and Ruth, and happy birthday to Kelly and Patrick. May your day be full of God's goodness. Furthermore, just want to note uh, Homewood Auxiliary dues. Um, we're going to continue uh, plugging that if you would like to be a member of the Homewood Auxiliary. If I remember correct, it's $3 per individual, $5 for a couple, and you can see Jane. Did I get that right? Uh, did I get that right, Alice? Three, five? Okay. <laughs> so we're going to continue to do that. Please see Jane Sharp if you are interested in that. Also, um, we are excited. It is cookie walk and apple cake time. And so the extended date for ordering apple cakes for Thanksgiving is November the 12th, not the 8th as we originally have. We're going to push it out a couple of days. So you have to the middle of this week to get your orders in. Um, you can get the order forms are in the back. They are also online. You go on the St. Mary's website, click the little button that says Thanksgiving apple cake, and that'll be the one that'll bring you the order form. Uh, and you can just fill it out right there, and it'll get right to our folks, and we'll make that happen. Furthermore, same process for the cookie walk. Our bakers are already started. The uh, spritzer ended up on our kitchen table, which means the bakers are going. All right, and so if you would like to place your cookie walk orders, unfortunately, we're still doing this one kind of online with a pickup this year, um, but uh, it continues on. And, and both of these fundraisers go to support all the wonderful work that this congregation does in our community. So please jump in, save yourself some baking work, order from the church, you're supporting a great cause, and you get probably the best baked goods you're going to get in Carroll County. I'll say it if nobody else will. And then finally, just one final thing. Next week, um, Jenny and I, I this sounds self, uh, self-aggrandizing, I don't mean it to be. Jenny and I are headed out to celebrate our anniversary, so I will not be here next week. But, and we're not going to have a speaker next week. We're really, really excited. Next week, we'll be celebrating Observing Stewardship Sunday, and we have put together a lineup of stories celebrating the good work of this congregation. And so it's going to be coming in a couple different ways. Really excited about that, and so we invite you to come to celebrate the good work that God has done in this congregation over the past year and to anticipate the good work that is yet ahead. And so I will not see you next Sunday. We will be back uh, the following Sunday for Christ the King, but, uh, and we look, I look forward to seeing you then. Y'all can look forward to seeing each other next Sunday. But friends, that is all that we have for today. Thank you so much for this really special service. Wherever God takes you this week, peace and good, y'all.